Just see it through. 
One day, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. You know what I'm going to do this morning? I want to have communion before I minister. So ushers, would you pass out the bread and the wine? We do this twice a month and this is one of the days. Amen. Go right ahead, gentlemen. Can you, while they are passing out the bread and the wine, would you remember what Jesus did for you. Can you just grasp the suffering that he went through? Wow. He said, as often as you do it, you show. You show and exhibit your faith. He said, remember. Remember. You see, it's a backward look. It's a present look. And it's a future look. We look back at what He did. We look today at what He's doing. And then we look into the future when He'll take the cup. And when we'll lift that third cup of victory that fourth cup and we will drink it fresh with him wow how powerful is that
God, we thank you. We thank you because we can partake of communion. Lord, you said we should do it. And you leave it up to us as to how often. But you said as often as you do it, we show forth what you did for us. I ask that you, Father, this morning examine our hearts. And by examining our hearts, look at us, and if you see anything that should not be, Father, straight in us. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who are indebted to us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. Forever and forever. Jesus took the bread and He broke it. And He gave it to His disciples just as it was passed out to you this morning. And He said, this is My body which was broken for you. As often as you partake and as often as you eat this, He said, you do show forth My death till I return. Would you take this and would you eat it? In the same manner, he took the cup. And he said, this is the new covenant in my blood. This is the New Testament. He said, take this wine and drink it for as often as you do. We are showing that Jesus went to the cross and he paid the ultimate price for our forgiveness. Would you take it? Or would you drink it? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God. I feel your presence here today. Thank you, Lord. Oh, there's nothing like communion and having His presence, is it? I'd like to announce to you who are on Ustream, we observe communion here at our church the second Sunday morning in each month. And we observe it the fourth Sunday evening of each month. And we would like for you to have communion with us. So if you would get you some bread, and if you would get you some grape juice, you can observe this with us when we partake. I know there are you out there who... Tune in to our services and you're saying, hey, this is my church too. And we want you to feel a part of it. So we'd like for you to observe these occasions with us. And if you're tuned in and if you're in driving distance, uh, we're having a special service tonight, church. We have our state youth director, uh, Bishop Dusty Wilson. He will be here tonight at 6 o'clock. He is an excellent speaker. You want to hear this man preach. He's one of our state executives. And 
I would like for you to come, and I'd like for our singers to be ready. Hey, uh, we we wanna we wanna sing for the glory of God, but yet we want when our uh, state personnel comes to visit with us, we like to show them how God has blessed us at our church. So, uh, if you see someone whose seat is empty. Uh, this morning, would you call them? Because they may not look at their watch all day. Uh, w- would you call them and tell them we're having church at 6? Because if they get here for 7, they'll be here for the altar service. And that's good. We need them for that. But but uh, uh, let's, uh, let's have a good uh, uh, turnout. We have every Sunday night, haven't we? Since we started this revival meeting, we, we, we're just about, you know, this is starting March. This is the second Sunday in March, and then we're going to celebrate Easter the last Sunday. But I want you to know that tonight, Brother Wilson will be here, and next Sunday, Brother uh, Miller will be here from the state office as well. And uh, we have our state overseer coming, but not for this revival meeting. He's coming for our 89th year celebration when we have that celebration. Our brother uh, Ivester will be here for that particular service. But I wanted you to, to, to uh, uh, call somebody today, whatever you have to do. Go over and knock on their door if you, if you want to do it and tell them you're there for lunch. And, and tell them, Pastor told you to do it. I mean, that'll get you off. And, and, and go ahead and enjoy yourself. And uh, you'll help them to get a real blessing tonight so they'll set their clock forward. I'm talking about Becoming mighty in spirit. I want to be mighty in spirit. Because if I know Clint's God, I want to be what God wants me to be. I'm here because I feel like God wants me here. And, and, and I'm just knowing that he's getting his church ready. He told me this. He, he, he said, I'm getting ready. And I know as I'm observing everything taking place in the world today, it shows me that Jesus is going to be coming soon. Very, very soon. And, and if we've ever set our affections on things above, I think we need to do it now. We tend, and I know I mentioned this, but I'm reiterating it to us all. We tend to look at things on a daily basis. We look at either how good things are going for us or maybe how bad it's going for us. We consider our ills and our, our, our uh, despondency about things that are happening. But Jesus told us in His Word to be anxious for nothing, but instead put our confidence in Him, knowing that He's going to take care of all things for us. So, we're setting our affections on things above. And if we are looking above, then we must see God on the throne. We must see Jesus at the right hand of the Father. We must observe Everything that is taking place there. We must fill our mind with the rich treasure of joy and the joy of heaven's programs. What does God want to do? 
In fact, He told us to pray like this. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So He's wanting us to, to look at His program and, and to, uh, uh, to also to discern what our proper earthly priorities should be. I, I, I know I want my priorities where they ought to be. And first and foremost, I think they ought to be in God. And if we put our priorities in God, God's going to take care of everything else. You know, He's done this for me down through my Christian pilgrimage, and I believe that He's going to do it that way for you as well. Now, I don't want to reiterate everything that I said, but I talked to you how God set the church in order. And I believe there was a time slot involved in this. And, and, and a day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. And if you take up uh, the dis different dispensations, uh, it, it, it's been over the last 6,000 years. And then on the seventh day, the Bible said that God rested wasn't that he was tired but 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 he looked at everything that he had accomplished and he saw that it was good now if a thousand years represents a day that puts us very near the coming of Jesus because Peter said a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. And it's now 6,000 years. And we are in the gap of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He gives us so many things and He's, he's, been, he, he, he's been with each generation as they have worshipped Him in, in, in the church age. The church dispensation. And, and then the church is raptured in Revelation chapter 4. Did you know we're going to be with Him? So this, this, this Philadelphia Laodicea church, they're, they're going to go and be with the Lord. And, and here we are in heaven in chapter 4. And, and then chapter uh, 5 talks about this uh, uh, book of seven seals. It's a scroll that has seven seals. It's sealed. And they looked all through heaven. There wasn't anyone worthy to open the seven seals book or scroll but yet when John was weeping because there was no one there that could do it then a proclamation was made hey there's someone who's worthy to do it and there was a lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world and only he could open that seven sealed scroll and then in, in chapter 5, he began to, uh, well, all of us in heaven, we fell down and we worshipped him because he could do this. And then in chapter 6, he talks about, and, and when the Lamb that was slain for our iniquities opened one of the seals I heard one of the living creatures who was before the throne of God I heard him saying come and see and when he come to see when they come to see there was a there, there was a horse that was uh, white uh, the rider was white there was a white horse or rather uh, a white horse. And 
And, and this rider of a white horse was not Jesus Christ. See, Jesus is riding the white horse in Revelation chapter uh, 19. The rider of this white horse. He said, I looked, behold, a white horse, and he sat on it, and he had a bow, and a crown was given to him. Did you know they're going to crown the Antichrist dictator? He's going to be a world dictator, and he'll go out conquering and to conquer. Conquer. I believe that rider of a white horse is living right now. I believe he's grown, and I believe he's take he's he's ready to take over the reins of government. Why? Because the Bible gives us so many indicators telling us when it's going to happen. And the Bible said that the Antichrist is going to come. And then it said that the second seal, when he opened that there was a, 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 a fiery red horse. This represents war. Let me tell you, war is coming worldwide. It's on the way. I, I see things breaking out everywhere. And, 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 and there comes a rider of a red horse. And, and the Bible said that the Second living creature. He said, come and see. And there was a black horse. And he that sat upon him, it said, uh, took peace from the earth. That, that's what the Word said. Uh, hey, peace is going to be... You take the church out of the way, and, and you're going to have terrible times here. When is it going to happen? I don't know, but it's on schedule. It, it, God's already set the date for it. No one knows the day or the hour but God. And He knows. But He told us not to be in the dark. So He gave us many signs. And everything has shaped up. Israel is back in her homeland. Her deserts are blooming like a rose. The nation surrounding her, 250 million people to her, 7 million. But God is going to look out for her. Oh yes. And 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 everything is shaping up. The world hates Israel. God's people. And it seems as if the world hates God. Have you noticed how they blaspheme him? Have you noticed how they come against him? They are doing it. And it's fulfilling the Word of God. I see it fulfilled everywhere. Church, these are the last days. Listen. Do you hear the hoof beats? I hear them. The hoof beats. I, I, I hear them. They're sounding louder and louder. Why? Because they're getting closer and closer. Four separate riders of horses. War is happening now. What about all of these happenings over in Egypt and Syria and 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 and, 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 and right on many other places? Hey, there's war coming to these United States of America. Why do you think what's going on is going on? What about all of the uh, bullets and shells that they are collecting up and they are stockpiling? They're going and they are 
getting the shells and the bullets from the average people who have them. I want you to know something's on the horizon. Now, I'm not upset about it. I don't need to go out and buy some bullets. Ah, oh, because my Lord Jesus, I can hear Him now. I've been saying it a long time. He's getting ready to say, come on up here. I'm going to take you above all this wrath, all this destruction, all of this that's going to come upon this earth. I'm going to take you above it. It's going to be a time of Jacob's trouble. Never has it been a time like this before neither will it be a time like this afterward but I'm coming to rescue you where I am there you may be also Jesus is coming church and he said prepare prepare for such a time as this hallelujah I believe it We are putting our priorities on laying up for tomorrow because we might have some hard times. Can't be any harder than the Israelites had in the wilderness. He gave a manna to eat. He brought in flocks of birds and give them meat to eat. Their clothing did not wear out. Have you been reading that in, in, in the books of Moses, the first five books? We're reading the Bible through as a church. I've been reading this and, and God's just been opening things up. Oh, you see, we still have it better than they did. Oh, there's food. God's going to look out for us church what I'm trying to tell us here as, as pastor and as leader to try and get us all to heaven is let's line up with what the word says looking up for the redemption because it's going to happen. And these things in the Revelation chapter 6 is going to be emptied and poured out upon those who are left behind. Have you read that series that Tim LaHaye wrote, Left Behind? Well, there's a lot of them going to be left behind. A lot of them. Boy, there was something. I was hoping to get to some of my notes, but Francis, I may not. I may have to finish next week. But, but, but here's what I wanted us to see. Well, let me give you the third seal, a black horse. There's going to be famine, church. It's going to be famine. On over in Revelation, the silver and gold is going to be thrown into the streets. It's not going to, it's not going to be able to do what it does for our current world economy. And and then the Bible said that 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 a a a cord of wheat will uh, uh, will be sold for a denarius. And, and three quarts of barley for a denarius and do not harm the oil and the wine. And, and, and that, black, that rider of a black horse had a pair of scales in his hand. And, and there's going to be famine. You see, we're talking about millions upon millions and tens of millions of people who will die during the great tribulation period. And then there was the fourth seal. And here is a rider of a pale horse and power is given them to take peace from the earth. There is war, the Bible said. And power was given them over a fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and the beast of heaven. Oh, I mean the beast of the earth. You see, 
he opened the fifth seal. And I saw under the altar the souls of them who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Now, listen to me carefully. Those children, that spouse, those loved ones we've been praying for, it seems as if they are not listening to the call of God. And here the Bible said, during the fifth seal, those who been, had been slain for the Word of God and for the testimony which they held. Now all of the prayers you've been praying for your children, look over into the book of Revelation chapter 8 and verse 13. Three, and this is going to be a parallel with this. And it's going to say, and, 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 and uh, uh, there's going to be silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Here's what I want you to see though. Verse 3, Another angel having a golden censer came and stood at the altar, and he was given much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And, and, and all of the prayers that we've been praying for that son, that daughter, that uncle, that aunt, that spouse, that, that relative, that friend, that neighbor, those prayers that's gone up there bottled up in heaven, those prayers are going to be mixed in a censer with a... Uh, 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 it's going to be mixed in that censer with incense. And, and then those prayers are going to be cast before the throne of God. And those prayers are going to come before God. And then we look back to Revelation at the fifth seal. And it said the souls of those who had been slain for the Word of God and for the testimony that they had. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord God, holy and true until you avenge our blood on those who dwell on the face of the earth and the Bible said white robes were given unto them oh sons and daughters will get saved they won't have to spend eternity in hell but they will have to go through part of the tribulation and I say church let's keep their name before the throne of Almighty God and let's pray God save them now. Hallelujah. I'd like for them not to go through any of the tribulation. But I have hope that our sons and daughters, if they fail to get right with God, they must give their life because they'll be slain. And then they'll be saved. They'll be saved. They miss the marriage supper of the Lamb. But they are given white robes. And they'll be with us if they don't get saved to go into rapture with us. They'll be saved and ride back on those white horses with us as we come back. And as we, we, we reign upon this earth a thousand years and that devil being put into the abyss for seven years. Now I'm ready to get back to my thought. The person of Christ is above. Our things are above. And next Sunday, I'm going to zero in on some other things. Our affections. Wisdom is from above. Wisdom is from above. We, we have treasures in heaven. How many of you have treasure in heaven? You already have a loved one that's gone on there. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Our treasures are above. And, and human authority is from above. Did you know we worry about who's in government? They can only go as far as God will allow them to go. 
God's got everything under control. He's able to restrain. I'm going to show you how that the Word of God will come into fruition in every situation. We're going to learn the purposes for which God gives power to man. Now, they have power to rule and even to rule nations. But God gave that power to them and God can readily take it back. Set your affection on things above. And that's the reason I'm preaching to you like I am. Because things are getting ready to start happening on big, on a big scale. I mean, Jesus, when He comes, then we can start seeing what's going to happen. Like clockwork, seals, trumpets, thunders, bowls of plagues, Babylon the Great, destroyed oh but I read in the back of the book and then after our thousand years a city the same size I, 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 God's been talking to me the same size as the garden of Eden there's going to be the new city Jerusalem did you know they're the same size <laughs> but that one that's going to come down out of heaven that's going to be 1500 miles in all directions streets of gold God is going to be present with us there how, how, how's it going to be to always be right there with God always be right there with Him forever and God said He would dwell with us there. Going to be with Him. Going to be with Him. Forever and ever. Well, I'm going to close. Would you stand? Anyway, I'm going to finish this, I hope. God, You're trying to get our attention. You're waving at us. You're trying to say, hey, hey, listen to what I have to say. You did, you, you did it, God. Already, Jesus, you, you, you did it in, in, in Revelation 2 and 3. You said, hear what the Spirit says to the churches. That's what you said, God. You're trying to get our attention. You're hearing... You're saying, hear what I have to say to the church. We're listening, God. Help us to get everything in order because we're going to either be called to come out and meet You or we're going to leave it all behind. Thank You, Jesus, for what You've loaned us to get by with while we're here. But, oh God, help us to set our affection on things above I pray for this people God I love this people you love them for God so loved the world he gave his son oh you love every one of us God thank you for that and I thank you for the provisions that you're making for our sons and daughters our loved ones God save them we want them to go in the rapture God would you save them God Help us to greet one another like the New Testament church greeted one another. They greeted, with each, uh, they greeted each other and said, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming back again. Oh God, help us to be ready. Thank you, Father. I love you. Amen. Don't forget, would you call someone, let's, let's really be here. Brother, Brother Dusty Wilson is a dynamic speaker. You need to hear this man of God tonight. He, I know he's an executive, but more than that, 
He's a preacher of the gospel, and he's got a message, and he's going to be outstanding. Now, Father, bless this congregation. God, prepare us for that snatching away. God, I'm ready, and this people is ready. But, oh, God, let us more than ever before look up because that redemption is close. As we leave this place, let the words of our mouths, meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in Thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Love one another in the Lord. You know, it's easy to love, isn't it?